Hold on to your hats and glasses, folks, because this is going to be a crazy ride. This is a brief and somewhat shocking history of pozole. And just a reminder, I know it's hard not to apply a modern lens to our views on ancient cultures and practices, but I really encourage you to keep an open mind while we explore this chapter of Mesoamerican history. As many of us know, the history of Mexico is long and complicated, and although many aspects of the Aztec culture remain shrouded in mystery, something that historians are sure of is that pozole significantly predates the Spanish colonization of Mesoamerica. In the year 1519, the Spanish conquistador, Fernando Cortez, arrived in Mesoamerica and quickly made his way to the capital of the Aztec Empire, Tenochtitlan. For world reference, in England, this was happening. And in China, the rebellion of Prince Ning was just coming to an end. Unbeknownst to Cortez, his arrival coincided with an important Aztec prophecy. The Aztec god, Quetzalcoatl, whom they credited with the creation of humans from corn, also known as maize, was set to return to Earth. What a coincidence for this dude in shiny armor, with all this new technology to come along now, they thought. Thinking that Cortez could be Quetzalcoatl in disguise, their guard was down, and their leader, Montezuma II, greeted the party with great honor. As history shows, Cortez had less than honorable intentions, but that's a story for another day. During the early days of Spanish occupation, the friar Bernardino de Sahagún began a 16th century ethnographic research study called The Universal History of the New Things of Spain. This study, although written through the perspective of a conquistador, gives us a lot of what we know today about the Aztec language, ritual practices, and food. This book refers to the religious significance of maize to the native peoples and mentions the dish called pozoli. In Nahat, the native language of the Aztec people, pozole refers to hominy. Hominy are the building blocks of pozole and made by soaking large kernels of corn in an alkali solution. This process is called nixtamalization. This solution can be made with water and wood ash or lye. Friar Sahagun's writings clearly mark pozole as a dish consumed on special occasions such as religious holidays. On such occasions, pozole was prepared with meat. Human meat. I know what you must be thinking. But let's keep in mind, things were very different back then. The Aztec people would ritualistically sacrifice prisoners by cutting their hearts out. The rest of the body was chopped up and cooked in a pot with maize. The resulting meal was shared among the community as an act of communion. Scholars have noted the significance of using maize and human meat together because of the Aztec creation story. According to this legend, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, created man out of masa, the product of ground hominy. Perhaps they believed the gods desired the product of sacrifice not to go to waste. And so, the Aztecs recycled the energy of sacrificed people and symbolically mixed the components of formed and unformed people, flesh and hominy. This was a way to show their creators thankfulness for the gift of life. It's important to recognize the role rituals played in communities to bring people together. We should additionally acknowledge that participating in ritual cannibalism by no means implies that folks walked around licking their lips at all the turkey-like shaped people. This was a spiritual practice, and therefore, people had a responsibility to participate, lest the wrath of the feathered serpent be upon you. In 1521, Fernando Cortez conquered the Aztec Empire, claiming the region now known as Mexico for Spain. What a jerk. The Spanish controlled the region, then outlawed the use of human meat and pozole, and so the Aztecs began to use chicken and pork as a substitute. Apparently, most people preferred pork because it tasted the most similar to human meat. Despite colonization and the dramatic changes Mesoamericans experienced, the tradition of pozole remains a staple in Mexican cuisine today. Although some of the ingredients have changed, the intention of celebration and togetherness around this dish has not. 
Fasole today comes in many varieties. Some recipes call for green or red chili, pork or chicken, topped with cabbage, lettuce, radishes, avocado, the list goes on. Ultimately, meat, hominy, and garlic are the anchors of this dish. When I make fasole, I like to joke and say my trick is to replace the human meat with pork. It's often met with uncomfortable laughter. Anyways, there you have it. A brief, brutally honest history of the soup we know and love today, fasole. Thanks for watching my video. If you learned something today, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this that feature food and history, go ahead and subscribe. I promise I have more coming at you next week. Until then, bye!